We've all got cotton clothes in our wardrobes, but have you ever wondered where cotton comes from? This is Senegal. Senegal is a beautiful West African uh, country with 12 million inhabitants, and most of them depend on agriculture. The two uh, major activities, economic activities, are fishing and also uh, tourism. Umar Bousseau works for Sodifitex, the Senegalese company that processes and exports cotton. Forced labor is banned in Senegal. Here, cotton farms are small family farms, and the cotton is not genetically modified. We fight alongside farmers for an environmentally friendly cotton. Tierno Kante is the head agricultural scientist at Sodifitex. The farmer work hardly here in Africa, and particularly in West Africa. To grow cotton, one must first prepare the field. You plough with oxen first, and then you sow. Then you need to fertilise the soil and control the weeds. Without the proper tools, it is hard work. And if done manually, it is very hard work. When it rains too much, your yield is poor. But when rain stops too early, you are no better off. When the cotton is ready, it must be harvested quickly. The cotton from fields is brought to collection points called cotton markets, where it is loaded onto trucks, then transported on dirt tracks and bad roads to the processing factory. Ginning is the separating of the cotton fibers from the seeds. The fiber is pressed into bales and packed in cotton bags ready for export. Today, American and European cotton subsidies are choking cotton farming in West Africa. In this context, fair trade is a way for small farmers to make a decent living. Before fair trade coming in Kedugu, people, they do not have health center, they do not have copy book, books and pensive in the school. Fair trade comes with solution because the premium which they get in cotton fair trade permit to those population to build an health center to pay pencil, book, copy books for the people, children who are in school and to build one storm room in order to store the product coming from the uh, Amdia Tu Diallo works for the National Federation of Cotton Farmers in Senegal. When a farmer sells his cotton on fair trade terms, he is sure to get a fair price that will at least cover his costs, plus a social premium of five cents a kilo to be invested in projects for his community. The proportion of cotton sold as fair trade is tiny because manufacturers are not asking for it. If all cotton was sold on fair trade terms, farmers in the villages would get more income. Fair trade also enforces high environmental standards, so the environment is better taken care of. Women and children's daily lives are improved, and the farmers' organizations are strengthened. It is a system that whole communities can benefit from. Buying products with the fair trade label is helping the development of small farmers in Africa. My hope for the future is to see more and more farmers realize their dreams by getting more healthcare facilities, building schools to send their kids to school. I mean like more revenue for the farmers and more premiums to realize like more projects. Fair trade celebrated its 25th anniversary last year, and in countries like Ireland, I think over 80% of people are aware of fair trade. But the reality is, when it comes to products like cotton, there's virtually no fair trade certified cotton products available yet in Ireland.
with Cottonmouth for coffee, bananas, cocoa, other products that Fairtrade works with. That people have extraordinarily difficult lives in countries like Senegal, other countries in West Africa, uh, in trying to earn a living from something that we, all of us in Ireland, have on our backs on a daily basis. We've been to uh, Ireland in uh, January, I think, or January 2013. It was a great experience, a great fair trade experience, <laughs> because I was uh, really surprised to see in the in the railway uh, stations and then uh, in in schools, uh, people are really aware of uh, the fair trade concept. What is it? And uh, we, we we meet like uh, really nice people that do believe into the fair trade. Uh, system. So we're in the middle of Fairtrade Fortnite now and the theme this year for Fairtrade Fortnite is the power of you, the power of ordinary people to make a difference to people like those farmers in Senegal who are growing the cotton by making conscious choices to look for fair trade goods and to ask the shops where we buy our products to stock fair trade goods. In Ireland we're very lucky to have you know, hundreds of people in fair trade towns all around the country who during the fortnight go out and organise events to raise awareness. This year they're painting their town. They're painting their town to promote fair trade products. They're also organising events with visitors and they're organising educational and awareness raising events in schools. And we think the educational work that gets done with children is really important because obviously they are the consumers of the future and they need to understand the responsibility they have to make a difference to people for good or ill when they make choices in supermarkets and other shops. Now you all have your map of Africa open. I want you to find a country called Senegal. Now if you go slightly south you'll find a line is going through that country. What is it? The no. equator. What? crop that you've learned about might grow in an equatorial region like that. And um, cotton would grow in Senegal. Why are you teaching the children about fair trade? Well, the reason I'm teaching them about fair trade is I think it's very important to engage them with genuine issues of social justice. So fair trade is a very real way in which they can engage with you know, issues of uh, injustice, gender inequality, sustainable development and issues like that. And because I suppose the logo is very recognisable, the children know it, so it's a very, it's an ideal starting point for um, those sort of issues. What action has the school taken as a result? Well, in 2010 we were awarded fair trade school status, so we decided to broaden the campaign. So we're now engaged in trying to make Clondalkin a fair trade town. How are you involved in the Clondalkin fair trade town campaign, Adam? Uh, I'm on the steering committee, so we make we decide what's going to happen next, and then we bring it to the class and see what they have to say. And so far, we've petitioned in our local shopping centre, and we've handed out letters, and we have set up a Facebook page called Maitland Dock and Fairtrade Town, and we have 827 likes so far. And what about you, Julia? I am also on the steering committee, so as Adam said. We talk about in the class, we bring it to the steering committee meeting and as it's Fair Trade Fortnight, we want everybody in Clondalkin to be aware of Fair Trade. I think the message for the retailers in Ireland is that they need to do significantly more about Fair Trade than they've done to date. That includes Fair Trade Cotton, obviously, because we're only starting out, but it also includes the coffees, the bananas, uh, the chocolates, the other products. Retailers in other countries uh, put them to shame. 